Okay, here's your quick tip. We've had lots of requests for how to mix neutrals. People don't have a lot of trouble mixing colors that are in their local color. But when it comes to neutrals, sometimes people get baffled. So let me show you my way for mixing neutrals, and maybe this will be a help. First of all, I've developed um, uh, three little scales here. Three little, um, I call them intensity mates. They're available on our website at um, dianemize.com and they're in various degrees of intensity and they can help you if you're having trouble um, reading intensity or reading neutrals. But mixing and reading are two different things. So um, even if you download the intensity wheel and uh, that will give you a place to start but you will still maybe benefit from this little process I use for mixing um, mixing neutral colors. Okay, I'm going to use this rock and we're going to mix this color right in here. So what's the first thing to do? The first thing is to look at the neutral and decide is it warm or is it cool. Now when we look at the color wheel we know that the warm colors are on one side and the cool colors are on the other. So your answer is going to help narrow that down. If it's warm such as this then you're going to be on this side of the color wheel. Now if you're working with my little intensity mate you can, you can find it just by rotating the intensity mate on top of whatever you're looking at or you can look through these little holes if you're looking in, uh, look in the distance at a subject. But now let's see start here. We see that that's not, that's not it. So it's not cool. It's not cool. We see that it's warm. Now we see that it's more the color that we see here um, are more related to what we're seeing there. In fact we're almost on the nose right here at yellow orange. So that tells us that this is a low intensity yellow orange and that's where we begin. That's the first question. The second question is what value is it? Is it light? Is it middle? Or is it dark? Now uh, you could use a value scale for telling that uh, but, or you could simply um, look at it and just assess what the value is. So I'm going to, um, I know I can tell by looking at this as compared to my palette. My palette is middle value and when I squint at the two I see that is just a little bit darker than middle value. So I've got two pieces of information now. I know that it's warm, I know that it's yellow orange, and I know that it's middle value. So the next thing is to go to a yellow orange. I look at yellow orange on the color wheel. I see that the complement of yellow orange is blue violet. So I know that I can use a blue or blue violet in order to lower that intensity, to create a more neutral intensity. Now, I have a yellow orange here, which is the Rembrandt Cadmium Yellow, or yellow Deep. That's too light. I might be able to use it later in the mixture, but it's too light to start with. Um, burnt Sienna is a good one to start with if you have that, or you, uh, the Rembrandt tra Transparent Oxide Red, or um, the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Burnt Orange, whatever color, tube color you have, it hardly matters, that is yellow orange you can start with. I'm going to start here with the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Burnt Orange to see how very, very dark that is. It's already somewhat neutral. So uh, I'll bring a little white into that because I want it lighter. Uh, but, uh, I know it's not that dark. This is more a middle value. And I, when I do that, I can um, test it on what I call test strips. Uh, just by putting a little bit of this color that I've mixed on the edge of the test strip, like that, like that, and compare it. Well, as I compare it, I'm seeing, oh, um, no, it's not quite right. I can look at that and see that it's not neutral enough. So I need then to go into a blue violet and I'm going to choose ultramarine blue because it is closer uh, closer to blue violet. So I bring a little bit right over here and just pick up a bit of that and mix it in here and see now does that give me what I need? It's going because it's ultramarine blue it's darker it's going to darken the color a little bit and I look from this to this it seems maybe a little bit darker. I think I'll use the brush this time. So I'm going to scoop a little bit of that on the brush, put it right on the edge here, 
like that and hold it here and it's almost there almost on the nose it needs to be perhaps just a little bit more blue now here's what I'm going to do I'm going to raise the value of the ultramarine blue right here to similar value as the color mixture I've got already so that as I'm adjusting this I won't have to adjust the value too so I'm going to add just a little bit more ultramarine blue in there and that looks pretty much on the mark of what I need to do okay let's try this when you're doing these test strips like this always use the edge of the test strip otherwise I don't have quite enough mix there. I'm going to pull some more in here. Otherwise, if you don't use the edge of the test, test strip, you won't be able to accurately compare the color you've mixed with the color you're going after. All right, there, there's a the mixture now. That's pretty much it. That's almost on the nose. So you can see there that by manipulating uh, the mixtures of the ultramarine blue and the quinacridone when I burnt orange that I chose there, I was able to come up with this mixture. Now I want to take one more step, I know it's a quick tip, and this won't take long, but I want to take one more step um, to show you what if you started out with something like uh, the real brilliant yellow orange. And I said that's lighter. It wouldn't be one that we would normally start out with, but if we start out with a lighter color and we use a darker color uh, that is complement, here, yellow, orange, blue, violet, then that might help us compensate, compensate for the value. So I'm going back over to the ultramarine blue and mix the yellow orange into that. I need to get just a little bit more ultramarine blue. Okay, right here. Now let's mix this. Now you see what's happening there? That's turning green. Now what does that tell us? When it turns green, you start out with one color, you set it with yellow-orange, put the yellow-orange down there, and lo and behold, when you reach for the, the color that seems to be blue-violet, like ultramarine blue, it turns green on you. What do you do? You look back at your color wheel, it says it turned uh, yellow-green, yellow-green, red-violet. Let's try a little bit of alizarin crimson in there and see what that will do. So bring some alizarin crimson over here. And not much. Elizabeth Crimson is a very strong color. And we throw that in and look at that. We're getting almost exactly the same color we have when we made the mixture over here. Now let's, let's, let's do a little bit of a test strip here. And put it here. Okay. That's pretty much it. It needs a little tiny, tiny bit of more of the Elizabeth little bit redder. You see just think these things through <clears throat> when you think these things through scientifically by using the color wheel you can take out all the guesswork and all the frustration. You see right there that's pretty close to it. So there's your quick tip.